So what did Mendel not know about? Bocce by Curious Moranland. Complex patterns in genetics going beyond Mendel. That's what we're going to focus on. So I'm going to do a series of videos in which we're going to talk about incomplete dominance, co-dominance, sex link videos, multiple alleles. Uh, if you're one of my students, these links are on Blackboard along with the this particular uh, PDF file is every one of my the incomplete dominant video, the sex link video, and the multiple alleles videos. Multiple alleles videos. Those have, already, those have already been shot. But uh, this is what's going to go here. So what exactly? Let's get started. What exactly does it mean to say beyond Mendel? Mendel didn't know about linked genes or sex linked genes or multiple alleles where you could have set more than one gene contributing to a um, more than one allele. Like instead of a big letter, little letter, and choices, you actually could have two different letters and then a third letter. Then polygenics. He didn't know about polygenics where there were several genes that contribute to one trait. Most of your ethnic characteristics deal with polygenics, like hair color, eye color, or more than one gene that make that up. It's more than just a big letter or a little letter. So let's start here with incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance. So if you see the lady there, she's holding a pink flower. The hybrid, the heterozygous, is a blend of traits. That's what incomplete dominance is, as opposed to regular dominance. Now, how do we write the letters? If you look at the alleles, they're written differently. It's not like a big letter, little letter. It's the trait would be flower, color. The allele would be red flower or white flower. Now, this is only two alleles. Now, let's look at the, but you can get red, white, or over here, pink. So let's look. Here is the same information, but now here are the phenotypes and the genotypes. Look at the genotype now. Look at the genotype. So we still have homozygous red, homozygous white, but heterozygous, one of each, is a blend. Incomplete dominance, it produces a third phenotype. So let's practice a couple problems. So we're going to do some flowers and some some uh, some examples from this these pelicans. We'll do these. See, there's three phenotypes: long, medium, and short. So let's do this. We're going to cross a white and a pink flower and a pink and a pink. Before we go any further, let me just elaborate on what the alleles for the pelicans should be. So here's three pelicans. And here's the Punnett squares from that handout. I just put it into this little, little file here. So take a look. Here's the alleles. You know, again, notice there's only two alleles, but three genotypes and now three phenotypes. Phenotypes. Remember, for regular dominance, you have three genotypes and only two phenotypes. But the hybrid, the heterozygous, produces a third phenotype. So I'll show you how to set this one up. The whole letter, the it's a letter with an exponent. How do you know if you're doing with regular dominance or incomplete dominance? We write the letters differently. Take a look at this handout here. Here's two ways of doing it. Some just write RW or RR. I don't like doing that. Even I like writing it with the exponent because I, you want to see the allele. And we'll talk about codominance in a second as soon as we work out these problems. So take a moment and pause the video and move on and fill it out and we'll see what you came up with. So I'm going to do the white times pink and pink times pink first. You'll notice here's pink, here's white. So here's the if you take here's the genotypes. So I crossed a pink times a white. The standard rules of a heterozygous times a homozygous still show up. You have 50% that are heterozygous and 50% that will stay homozygous. Now I didn't write the genotype and phenotype here, but look at this. And I want to compare regular dominance with this in a moment. So a these are both look pink, a pink times a pink. And look, you get all three phenotypes as a result of this. 
all three phenotypes and all three genotypes. Let's go ahead and answer the, go back to the pelicans. And here's your results. Now remember with the pelicans, the one pelican is BLBL. Let's go. So here's the, uh, here's the allele. Remember, you have one allele. Organisms have two of each homologous chromosomes, and or have and each on each chromosome is one of the possible alleles. So remember, this letter represents a sequence of DNA that makes up the genotype. When you see the expression of genes, you'll see the phenotype. You got to go through transcription, translation. The protein, the protein will fold and shape, be modified, and then you have your functional trait. Okay, so you got BLBL for long, uh, BLBS for medium, and uh, small, small is all BS. Laugh if you want to. Okay, so here are the results for that one. Now, pause the video and see if you can answer this question. I'm going to use the pink flower in a, another example of a for a regular dominant uh, as a comparison. Let's look at the pink again. Do you notice the difference between traditional 1, 2, 1 for the genotype? Hey, it's the same. 1, 2, 1, it's the same. But the phenotype, there's only two phenotypes. The homozygous and the heterozygous or, will look black. But the double recessive will look that way. But there's nothing dominant here. So look at the results here. Genotypic ratio is 1, 2, 1 for regular dominance. Genotypic ratio for incomplete is also 1, 2, 1. However, the phenotype is where you see the big difference. The phenotype for regular dominance is 3 to 1. The phenotype for incomplete dominance is 1, 2, 1. Here's the thing that I want my students to remember. The genotype, every genotype has its own phenotype. Every genotype has its own phenotype. There's still only two alleles. So before we close this video, I've been talking for a while, let's talk about incomplete dominance. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do a Punnett square, but I'm just going to show the difference. OK. The difference between incomplete dominance and codominance, first, neither one of them are dominant over each other. So for example, chickens. And in blood types, are, we have blood type AB. That's a, that's a case where you inherit the A gene and the B gene, and you express both. That's what it means. Both are show up, or both are expressed. It says it a little bit better here. Checkered chickens, for example, um, they're going to be both error expressed at the same time. The homozygous is uh, is one thing. So you can be homozygous black, homozygous white, but if you're heterozygous, you expect express both. If you look at this chicken, this chicken may look grayish, but if you were to examine it, you'd find that it's got black feathers and white feathers crisscrossing. If this was incomplete dominance, this whole thing would look gray. But this is actually black and white crisscross flowers. So that's the difference between codominance and incomplete dominance. And that's going to conclude our video on our first segment on what is the difference between regular Mendelian genetics and going beyond Mendel Mendelian genetics. Brought to you by Curious Moranland, where science literacy will make America great.